Michael Arlen was a British writer, novelist and dandy. Born in 1895 in Rus Bulgaria as Dikran Koyomogian, the son of merchant and importer Sarkis Koyomogian. In 1901 the family moved to Southport in Lancashire, Britain. Educated at Malvern College, he briefly studied at the University of Edinburgh before moving to London to make a living as a writer. His Bulgarian nationality made him suspicious for the British authorities during World War I, but in 1916 he began contributing to Ararat, a searchlight on Armenia, and soon afterward for the New Age magazine. He legally changed his name to his pen name of Michael Arlen in 1922. He debuted as a writer in 1920 with his autobiographical The London Venture. However, his first success was the 1924 The Green Hat, the novel adapted by Arlen in 1925 for Broadway, and was adapted for the 1928 film A Woman of Affairs, starring Greta Garbo. In 1928 he married Countess Atalanta Mercati. Following the outbreak of World War II, she joined the Red Cross, while Arlen was briefly Civil Defence Public Relations Officer for the East Midlands in 1940, before his loyalty was questioned in the House of Commons, Arlen resigning and moving to America. He died of cancer in 1956 in New York. In 1927, Arlen published Ghost Stories, which was a selection of stories published earlier in These Charming People and Mayfair. Arlen's style here is a bit too witty. He's focused mostly on the finer people attending fancy parties around London, with the characters often sparring with each other verbally, with much focus on the aristocracy. The Prince of the Jews is the story a Rear Admiral Sir Charles Fassett Fate tells to a friend in one of his clubs. That one night he was marked in a bar by notorious rogue Julian Raphael. Now, Julian only made matters worse for Sir Charles when he beat Miss Menena Cohen for telling Charles Raphael's name. And what follows is Charles and George Tarlian following the young lady to find Raphael's hideout and send the police after him. But she warns Charles that Raphael wants to kill him out of jealousy, and a knife is thrown, but not landing where it should. The tearful Raphael promising to only ever throw one more knife before he disappears. Thereafter, always appearing to Charles when no one else can see him, having conversations that never happened, Charles knowing his time is almost up. The gentleman from America has Sir Cyril Quillier bet an American to stay the night in a haunted room, but he seems to have pushed the American with his stage theatrics a bit too far. Toulamois relates how the narrator's friend Hugh met his future wife in a place which suddenly appeared near his house 20 years before he met her again and married her before Lamois left him because she loved him too much. The Ghoul of Gold is Green is a sort of mishmash. It starts off as a story of a serial killer, which is then turned into a ghost story about a haunted house, with a side story about a Bulgarian bandit turned flower inventor, but it turns out it was all a setup to get two of Arlen's witty gentlemen to act in an amateur film, which turns out to be awful. The Ancient Sin is a more traditional ghost story, but a well-written one, of some of Arlen's gentlemen arriving at a clearing in the forest, and finding an old man beating his own son for some nameless, unforgivable sin, the son then killing his father, but when the two return with the police, the house is gone, though there is another surprise waiting for them. The loquacious lady of Lansdowne Passage has George Tarlian explain how he once met a woman in a passage who explained to him how she died. The other of the two well-written traditional ghost stories. The smell in the library has George Tarlian and Mr. Trevor visit the house of Anthony Poole, or Red Anthony, whom they thought dead, and he took the house his elder brother Roger had shot himself in in front of Anthony because of the failed business he had saddled on Roger. And Anthony seems to think that years later, the room where he shot himself still has the scent of gunpowder in it, and it is driving him into a frenzy. The characters often speak too wittily and they act in ways which seem a bit over the top or unrealistic, such as the story of how Red Anthony once arrested two policemen for loitering and took them to Vine Street. In 1934 he published Hell, said the Duchess. It is the story of Duchess Mary Dove and was part of Carl Edward Wagner's famous list of 39 best horror novels. The Duchess, the image of charity, is suddenly seen by her relations acting in a vulgar manner while inhabiting seedy taverns and nightclubs but others attest the Duchess could not have been there as she was elsewhere at the time. Then a superintendent comes to the Duchess's door and wants to ask her questions in relation to a series of murders of the so-called Jane the Ripper, where she is a suspect. The whole short novel proceeds as a standard whodunit doppelganger mystery story, but a few pages before the end the double is revealed to be some sort of shapeshifter, drawing upon arcane and hellish powers. The novel having a sudden grim ending, which really comes out of left field, much like this entire turn. There is nothing in the novel that even hints at this, and it's good but it's too little too late in relation to the rest of the book. 